I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. And you had a great start of the day. So a quick nod whether the audio visual is all good. All right, I can see, yes, the audiovisual is all good. Happy morning, everyone. And today we are here for NF100 episode 63, where we are going to discuss some high yield points on vitamins. Uh, just focusing on the most important points that are like must know for your exam. Vitamins itself, it's like a huge topic, but I'll be just focusing on the most important aspects of it, which are required for your exam. All right. And uh, a quick reminder for everyone, uh, we have started a crash course uh, on mnemonics, uh, basically the last minute revision of the various volatile topics uh, from various subjects. And we have started this on April 20th and this will go on till uh, 13th of May, right? This will go on till 13th of May. From 2nd of May, like these are the various sessions that we had started on 20th. Uh, the first two sessions we did pharmacology, then we had microbiology, then we had FMT. Yesterday we had biochemistry. And then the next two coming up like 29th, these are the free live classes. And we'll be starting with the plus course from 2nd of May till 13th of May. Those will be 10 sessions. And 29th April, that is tomorrow, 12 p.m., we are going to discuss surgery. And then on 1st of May, it's going to be uh, dermatology. Okay, so this is the plan and the rest of the subjects, the rest of the topics will be covered here in the plus course, right? In the plus course. And also today is the last day where we have your 20% off on all the subscriptions. So if you take this uh, one subscription, it will give you access to all the courses, all educators, including the upcoming mnemonics course and also the previous mnemonics batches that I have taken. Okay, and uh, this is the free test calendar that we have. We have the next mock test coming up on 1st of May at 9 a.m. You have the various subscriptions. Plus, Iconic is with Prep Ladder. Light is for the test series, only the questions. And we have MBBS Prof 1 uh, subscription as well. Even on which we have your 20% off available. And these are the updated prices. Okay, uh, Ashia, uh, Parveen, try writing a mail to the NBE and wait for the reply. Now, if there's something which is not in your control, you cannot change. Uh, just relax. I mean, uh, it should not be a great uh, fuss. Okay, it should not be a great fuss about that. So just write a mail to NBE. Okay. All right. And we also have the previous year question bank, including the FMGE exam, the last four years, whether you are appearing for NEED PG or INICT. Make sure that you are having a look at all the PYQs and the related topics of at least these last four years. And now we also have the daily practice papers for the plus subscribers before the class, after the class is what we have on the plus. For the FMG students, we are starting, we have started with the new batch uh, yesterday itself. And this is the plan. What's the plan for the rest of the day today? That is 28. We are having one NF 100 episodes now. And we will have the next class at 9 p.m. Uh, today. It's going to be your KBMD. Okay, the KBMD mixed back top 10 mnemonics is uh, what we will have. Uh, okay, it's, is what we will have at 9 p.m. And the plan for tomorrow, that is 29th. Again, we will have the YouTube class at 8 a.m. Where it will be your most expected MCQ series that is going on. And then at 12 p.m., we will have the mnemonics crash course, mnemonics in surgery, right? Including the, uh, you know, the volatile part in uh, surgery, the classification scores, uh, surgery names, all of that will be included in the mnemonics crash course for surgery tomorrow at 12 p.m. That's going to be on the app. All right. Okay. 
So let's start with the topic of uh, vitamins. So uh, the various deficiencies, what is asked generally in vitamins is what deficiency leads to which manifestations and um, which vitamin, which test is done for which vitamin deficiency. Okay. So basically remember that we have your fat soluble vitamins, right? We have fat soluble vitamins and we have water soluble vitamins, fat soluble and water soluble vitamins. The fat soluble vitamins are your A, D, E and K. Your water soluble vitamins are B and C, right? Now, uh, the important clues everywhere for your uh, deficiencies. Uh, so for the vitamin D, the history would be like the patient does not go out in the sun because ultraviolet light required for your vitamin D synthesis. Then for your vitamin B12 deficiency, the most important clue given would be vegetarian diet the patient is on a strict vegetarian diet because b12 the major source is the non-vegetarian food then for folic acid the major clue that would be there there was a question in your need pg21 also like it would be a young a young person like let's say software engineer busy with the work all the time eating a lot of junk food and no leafy vegetables are included in the diet so remember folic acid, foli is foliate. That foliate means leafy. It is present in the leafy vegetables, right? So these are the major uh, clues that will be given for identifying the various deficiencies, okay? For identifying the various deficiencies. Now, what are the various uh, manifestations that we have? All right. So thymine, that is vitamin B1, is your berry berry right b1 b1 berry berry very very frequently asked it's your vitamin b1 deficiency it could be a dry berry berry it could be a wet berry berry wet matlab related to fluid blood so basically it's your cardiac manifestation heart failure dry means the nerves so basically it's your neuropathy so there could be neuropathy and there could be cardiac manifestations then it can also lead to Wernicke's encephalopathy, a very, very favorite question, especially in FMG exam. Wernicke's, the triad is GOA. What does GOA stand for? Global confusion, right? There is global confusion, ophthalmoplegia, and there is ataxia. Very, very important. Global confusion of thalmoplegia and ataxia would be the history. And thymine deficiency is generally seen in patients who are alcoholics, right? So there would be the background history of an alcoholic person or a homeless person basically who is malnourished who will have thymine deficiency. The important points to remember here, when you treat this Wernicke case, when you treat this Wernicke case, right? What do we need to give before giving glucose or dextrose? It's very important to give thymine supplementation. So in an alcoholic patient who is hypoglycemic, before giving glucose, it's important to give thymine also because if this thymine deficiency is there in that alcoholic patient, it will precipitate the features of case because for glucose utilization, we require thymine, right? For glucose utilization, we require thymine. Where is thymine required? Thymine, the active form is thymine pyrophosphate PPP. That is your pyruvate dehydrogenase, right? Pyruvate dehydrogenase, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, branched chain ketoacid dehydrogenase. These are the ones, uh, you know, we, they have the five cofactors or coenzymes. Remember these three enzymes? The mnemonic to remember the five was tender loving care, right? Tender loving care for Nikita, right? So TLCFN, you have TPP, you have lipoic acid, coenzyme A, FAD, NAD. Basically, TPP is your vitamin B1. Coenzyme A is basically your vitamin B5, pantothenic acid, riboflavin, and niacin, right? Yes, TLC, Nikita family, absolutely right. So these are the five which are required for these enzymes, right? These are required for these enzymes. There was an image-based question on pyruvate dehydrogenase in your NEET PG21 exam. I'll, I'll show you that image as well. Okay, I'll show you that image as well. Just give me a minute. 
all right so remember that please give thymine uh, along with so before giving glucose in wernicke's then the next one is riboflavin how do we remember riboflavin remember riboflavin okay riboflavin so ribo is rhyming with sibo ribo is sibo there is seboric dermatitis okay there is seboric dermatitis ribo is rubro ribo is rubro rubro means red what is red there is red cornea that means corneal neovascularization okay corneal neovascularization is a feature of riboflavin deficiency ribo sibo ribo rubro and remember the f f basically for the fissures okay there is fissures fissures in the lips there is glossitis and there is magenta colored tongue okay there is magenta colored tongue is what we see with riboflavin deficiency next is vitamin b3 niacin very very important pellagra what are the three d's for pellagra dermatitis diarrhea dementia again there was a question on this in neat pg 21 a lot of questions uh, come a lot of questions from the topic of vitamins okay so dermatitis diarrhea dementia and the fourth one is your death what image based question do we get in pellagra that is your casals necklace towards the end we will see some important images that can come from the topic of vitamins right the casals necklace dermatitis in the sun exposed area that is niacin deficiency from which a vitam uh, from which amino acid b3 is derived b3 3 is tri that is basically from tryptophan right it is from tryptophan it is from tryptophan what are the other derivatives from tryptophan trypto is your seroto that is your serotonin melatonin right serotonin melatonin So there's a problem with availability of tryptophan vitamin b3 will not be synthesized so that will lead to pellagra and that is seen in heart nerve disease right heart nerve disease you have the history of tryptophan is not being absorbed reabsorbed from the renal tubules so heart nerve is basically your tryptophan niacin affected leading to pellagra then you have carcinoid where all the tryptophan is bypassed to serotonin B3 is not getting synthesized even that will have features of uh, pellagra right even that will have features of pellagra so remember heart nerve carcinoid and even your vitamin B6 deficiency due to kine urinase not acting well there will be your vitamin B3 deficiency with B6 deficiency also all right so that is about B3 that is pellagra B5 5 matlab panto so pantothenic acid is your B5 okay let me show you this so panto is 5 it's your pantothenic acid remember panto is your pants pants we wear in the foot so basically it causes your burning foot syndrome which is called as nutritional melalgia 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 in the limbs there is pain because of the nutrition deficiency so remember your burning foot is pantothenic acid okay pantothenic acid pyridoxine is your b6 when i write 6 the i and x x and i that is pyridoxine we know that the drug i and h can cause pyridoxine deficiency pyridoxine is very very important for heme synthesis right the rate limiting enzyme ala synthase heme synthesis if it's not there it can lead to anemia sideroblastic anemia very very important one of the recent inict questions what vitamin supplementation do we give in neonatal convulsions why does it cause convulsions because vitamin b6 is required for gaba synthesis right it is required for the synthesis of gaba and gaba is a inhibitory neurotransmitter so if there is no gaba everything is excited so the cortex will be excited there would be your convulsions so b6 supplementation is given also b6 deficiency is for your homo 16 urea 6 again homo 16 urea classical homo 16 urea it's for b6 deficiency it is also used in morning sickness in pregnancy hyperemesis gravidarum right all of these we need to remember vitamin b7 for 7 at least remember like you have hallucinations biotin 
Seven is like heaven. So patient get these hallucinations of being in heaven. That is how you can remember. So hallucinations are seen in vitamin B7 deficiency. Okay, vitamin B7 deficiency. Next one, B9, that is your folic acid and B12, that is uh, your cyanocobalamin, methylcobalamin. Both of these, you know, are very much related. The folate and B12 are very much related. So if there's a recent question also, in which vitamin deficiency, there is functional deficiency of folic acid or a functional deficiency of B12, basically it's your B12 deficiency where there will be functional deficiency of folic acid because folate gets trapped. It is not in the form which can be utilized in the functional form. So there is functional deficiency of folic acid is seen in B12 deficiency, right? Now, so both of them cause your megaloblastic anemia. They are required for your DNA synthesis. So there is megaloblastic anemia. Plus, remember neural tube defects. To prevent the neural tube defects, we give folic acid supplementation, right? Your B12 leads to spinal cord degeneration, subacute combined degeneration of the cord. Tell me what tracts are affected. We have seen the mnemonic for that. What tracts are affected in your subacute combined degeneration of cord? SCD, that is your spinocerebellar tract. Right, it's your corticospinal tract, and most important, it is the dorsal columns. Dorsal columns affected, loss of vibration and proprioception would be there. There can be homocysteinemia also in deficiency of both B9 and B12. So basically, it's B6, 9, 12, the multiples of three, which lead to increased homocysteine levels. Right, increased homocysteine levels. Next is vitamin C deficiency, that is curvy. This vitamin C, remember C is full of water, hydroxy. It is required for hydroxylation of proline and lysine, basically for cross-linking happening in collagen. So if vitamin C is not there, C for collagen. Collagen will not be formed well. So the wound healing would be delayed. Very, very important question. Delayed wound healing is a feature of vitamin C deficiency. There would be bleeding gums. There would be echimosis, right? All of these would be seen. Plus a very important point, there is perifollicular hemorrhages. Around the hair follicles, the hair follicles will be kinged like this and around that there will be hemorrhages, right? There would be hemorrhages. Very, very important, okay? And this curvy is the one which presents with pseudoparalysis, right? Why? Because it leads to your subperiosteal hemorrhage. Right, it leads to subperiosteal hemorrhage, and that is very, very painful. So the patient is not able to stand. So there is pseudo paralysis. What are the X-ray signs of scurvy? What are the radiological features of scurvy? Again, need PG twenty one question. So we have the white line of Frankel. Adjacent to that, we have the tremor field zone. Okay, adjacent to that, we have tremor field zone. White line of Frankel. Summer field zone, pencil thin cortex, falcon spur. Most important, you have the ring epiphysis, which is called as Wimberger's ring, right? That is Wimberger's ring, which is C. All right. Now, going to the next, next one, the what can present with niacin deficiency? That is pallagra like features. First, we saw heart nub disease. Why? Because basically, tryptophan absorption is affected. So, niacin will not be formed. Carcinoid, because all the tryptophan is going towards serotonin. Vitamin B6 deficiency, because there is kinurinase pathway which is affected. And if the patient is on maize and jawar, right, this is a very important history. Again, need PG21 question. Maize rich diet, jawar rich diet, they lead to your niacin deficiency. In jawar, there is increased leucine which prevents the niacin availability and even in maize the niacin is not available so remember jkl it's your increased jawar is increased leucine content which is not making niacin available right so maize and jawar are very very important clues for niacin deficiency yes 
Uh, very good. One of you mentioned if there's a history of raw egg, that is avidin, right? Avidin inhibits your biotin availability, right? It inhibits your biotin, the avidin in the raw egg that inhibits your biotin availability, okay? Next one. So these were about uh, your basically the deficiency manifestations. This is we have seen about the water soluble vitamins. We will be seeing the fat soluble vitamins A, D, E, K towards the end. First, let's complete the water soluble vitamins. That's your B1, B2, B3, B5, 6, 7, and then you have 9, 12, and vitamin C. Now going to the coenzymes, uh, you know, the active forms and the function of the various water soluble vitamins. So for thymine, it is thymine pyrophosphate. We all know the function is decarboxylation. To be more specific, it is oxidative decarboxylation and very, very important transketolase reaction. Okay, transketolase reaction. That's why for thymine, we do your transketolase test, right? The transketolase test is what we do. So thymine, remember it's transketolase. It is TPP, which is the active form. Riboflavin is your flavin, that is FAD. And niacin is your NAD. Now, both of this, we know that FAD gets converted to FADH. NAD gets converted to NADH. So, basically, it's your hydrogen transfer where it is participating, right? So, it's your oxidation reduction reactions, basically, where this FAD and NAD are required. Next one, B5 is your pantothenic acid coenzyme A. A is transfer of acyl group, right? Transfer of acyl group. The enzyme that is dependent is your thiokinase, thiokinase. B6, pyridoxin, it's your pyridoxal phosphate. Very, very important, transamination. Okay, transamination is pyridoxin, right? Basically, your enzyme. That is your ALT, alanine transaminase. This is your pyridoxin dependent, right? Then you have AST. AST is also called as SDOT or SDPT. What is AST also called as? SDOT or SDPT? Which is SDPT and which is SDOT? Right, we read this in our liver thing. So ALT is SDPT. And AST is SDOT. Why? Because basically this alanine AL gets converted to pyruvate, right? That's your transamination reaction. Aspartate AS forms your oxaloacetate. That is another question which is asked. Aspartate transamination oxaloacetate. That is why AST is SDOT because aspartate forms oxaloacetate, right? So transamination is your vitamin B6. Decarboxylation, remember your B1 is oxidative decarboxylation. This is just a decarboxylation, right? Like you see in your norepinephrine synthesis, dopamine, the dopa decarboxylase, that is your B6, right? That's your uh, B6. Next one, cofactor of glycogen phosphorylase. Very, very important. Remember, it is your B6, okay? It is your B6 which is required. So, your B6 is basically your transamination, decarboxylation, and glycogen phosphorylase, glycogen phosphorylase. Biotin is required for carboxylation, okay? Biotin is required for carboxylation, right? Very, very important, like your acetyl-CoA carboxylase, that will require biotin, okay? Carboxylation is biotin. So therefore, when you have your multiple carboxylase deficiency, can you tell me the urine order? If you have seen the recent Insta post on Tuesday tricks we had posted, what is the urine order in multiple carboxylase deficiency? Sweaty feet? No, that's your Tom Cat urine, right? That's your Tom Cat urine. That is multiple carboxylase deficiency. MC, MCD, it's a Tom Cat urine. So, what is the treatment that we give in this case? We give 
बायोटीन कार्बोक्सिलेस को एक्टिवेट करने के लिए वी नीड बायोटीन रिमेम्बर बायोटीन वुड बी द ट्रीटमेंट नेक्स्ट वन फोलिक एसिड रिमेम्बर एफ ओ एफ ओ इट्स ट्रांसफर ऑफ फॉर्मल ग्रुप और मिथाइल ग्रुप दैट इज बेसिकली योर वन कार्बन ट्रांसफर राइट विच विच विटामिन फॉर वन कार्बन ट्रांसफर फोलिक एसिड द एक्टिव फॉर्म इज एट्रा हाइड्रोफोलिक एसिड बीट फेल्फ कोबाल अमाइन यू हैव मिथाइल कोबाल अमाइन एडिनोसिल कोबाल अमाइन ओके ना रिमेम्बर मिथाइल एम ई टी एच मिथाइल दिस इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर मिथियोनिन मिथाइल कोबाल अमाइन मिथियोनिन सिंथिस from where this methionine is getting synthesized basically from homocysteine right homocysteine forms methionine this pathway requires b9 and b12 so that's why if there is deficiency of b9 b12 there will be homocysteine urea or homocysteinemia right but how will you differentiate whether this increased homocysteine is due to b9 deficiency or b12 deficiency how will we differentiate this both of them will have increased to homocysteine how will we differentiate whether this is b9 or b12 most important remember the increased methyl malonic acid levels very very important and a frequently asked question again b12 is your methyl cobalt amine so your methyl malonic acid is increased in your b12 deficiency why because basically your enzyme methyl malonyl coa mutase that is required okay that requires your vitamin b12 if that is b12 is not there methyl malonic acid will increase in b in b12 deficiency okay next is your vitamin c ascorbic acid ascorbic acid dehydroascorbic acid basically hydrogen so again oxidation reduction and hydroxylation right it's required for hydroxylation of proline and lysine right proline and lysine for collagen formation vitamin k remember k for k it is required for carboxylation of the clotting factors it is gamma carboxylation of which amino acid g for g glutamic acid gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid to activate the clotting factors that is why vitamin k has a very important role in coagulation the vitamin k dependent clotting factors are 2 7 9 10 right 2 7 9 10 anti clotting protein c and protein s are also vitamin k dependent so that is why if there is vitamin k deficiency there is hemorrhagic disease of the newborn hemorrhagic disease of the newborn all right so this is a quick review of what we have learned now thymine pyrophosphate is the active form of b1 enzyme dependent is transketolase fmn fad is your b2 again the enzyme is amino acid oxidase amino acid oxidase niacin nad that is your lactate dehydrogenase pyridoxine transamination alanine transaminase biotin is your carboxylase pyruvate carboxylase coenzyme a is pantothenic acid acyl group transfer thiokinase and folic acid formal group formal transfer is one carbon unit transfer okay now this is the uh, image that i was telling you that was asked in the neat pg 21 question which looked more like a chemistry ka question but thinking logically we could have solved this question like it was given as enzyme 1 enzyme 2 and enzyme 3 this is your pyruvate dehydrogenase complex okay now we said that there are five things required tlc for nikita family so you have tpp lipoic acid coenzyme a nad and fad so you can see all of those here you have tpp there is basically your lipoic acid wala there is coenzyme a there is fad and there is nad the same are required for alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase and also for branch chain ketoacid dehydrogenase now the question was what does this e1 e2 e3 represent which one is acyl transferase which one is dehydrogenase and all of that now thinking logically the first step is pyruvate right pyruvate and this is your pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme 1 second is your acyl group is what you can see is coming into the picture 
TPP is your acyl TPP, then acyl TPP again getting converted, forming acyl lipoid. So it's your acyl transferase. Then it's your acyl transferase, which is forming basically your acetyl CoA, pyruvate to acetyl CoA. That's your pyruvate dehydrogenase. And here you have dehydrogenase because basically you see the FAD forming FADH, NAD forming NADH. So this is dehydrogenase. So you have pyruvate dehydrogenase, you have acyl transferase, and you have dihydrolipoid dehydrogenase. Okay. Look at this one again. Pyruvate dehydrogenase, then transacetylase, and then you have dehydrogenase. So these are the enzyme components, the coenzymes, TPP. Then there is your lipoic acid. There is coenzyme A, FAD, and NAD. Okay, these are required for pyruvate dehydrogenase. Okay. Next one, what test do we do for the various vitamins? So, for vitamin B1, okay, vitamin B1, we said it is transketolase. So, we do RBC transketolase test. For B2, it is your FAD, which is required for oxidation reduction. So, remember, it is your reductase for riboflavin. It is reductase, glutathione reductase. Pyridoxin is required for transamination. So, we do transaminase. For folic acid, F for F, it is your fig glue excretion, right? The fig glue test is done for folic acid. Remember EFGH, this is basically your histidine load test because histidine is what forms the fig glue. Remember, it is called as histidine load test also. B12, methyl cobalamine, so it's your serum, methyl malonate levels. Very, very important, increased methyl malonate levels is your B12 deficiency. Okay, it's your B12 deficiency, very, very important. So these are the various tests that we do for the vitamins. Now coming to the fat soluble vitamins. Okay, coming to the fat soluble vitamins, ADEK. Now in the vitamin A, most important, right, affecting the eye, night blindness is your vitamin A. Xerophthalmia, vitamin A. Acne is A. We give uh, isotretinoin for treatment. So, vitamin A deficiency, acne. It can also impair your immunity. These are the deficiency status. Very, very important vitamin A toxicity causes your pseudo tumor cerebri, raised ICT, pseudo tumor cerebri. Very, very important, right? Vitamin A is also important for the hair growth and all. So, uh, remember, it can cause the dry skin. The hair growth is affected. Vitamin D, the active form is 125. There should be both, 125. That is your dihydrocholecalciferol 125. That is basically your calcitriol. Deficiency leads to rickets in children, osteomalacia in adults. Excessive vitamin D, calcium excessive will lead to calcinosis. Vitamin E is your alpha tocopherol. Remember E for erythrocytes. Vitamin E, E for erythrocytes. It affects the RBC, leads to hemolytic anemia. Very, very important. And it also affects the cerebellum. There is spinocerebellar ataxia. Very important. That is vitamin E. K is your menidione, minaquinone, phyloquinone, which is the active form. And you know that the deficiency leads to hemorrhagic disease of newborn. It affects the coagulation. So it increases the PT and APTT and it can present with bleeding, hemorrhagic disease of newborn. If there is vitamin K access, there would be hemolysis, so hyperbilirubinemia and carnicterus. Okay, and carnicterus. Okay. Which vitamin deficiency can present similar like vitamin B12 deficiency? Which fat soluble vitamin? It is vitamin E. Why? Because it is causing your spinocerebellar ataxia. We said vitamin B12 also affects the spinocerebellar tract. Right? But here in vitamin E, we would also see hemolytic anemia. Vitamin B12 will have raised methyl malonic acid levels. Okay? So remember these important points. Now the active form of vitamin A, retinol, retinal and retinoic acid. Out of these, which is the one which is important for vision? 
which is the one which is important for vision yes that is your kvmd question one of the recent kvmd questions we had vitamin e deficiency right tell me uh, for the vision which is important retinol retinal or retinoic acid it is retinal retinal okay remember for vision it is retinal you know it's like a uh, retinal remember like gorinal ishq gorinal ishq mila you you can remember it as gorinal aankh mila okay gorinal aankh mila so that is nal is your retinal okay aankh is your retinal and uh, then for reproduction it is retinol it is all right all live creatures reproduce remember reproduction is a feature of all so retinol is your all okay remember it's your retinol that is all it's not all nal is your aankh wala theek hai aur baki sab ke liye retinoic acid that's your epithelium the epithelial differentiation gene expression growth and development that is what it is okay so same thing sonali so ye ho gaya aapka fat soluble vitamins vitamin a d e k please remember all of this that is hemorrhagic disease of newborn hemolytic anemia spinal cerebellar ataxia night blindness xerophthalmia acne there was a question of vitamin a deficiency also in neat pg 21 a lot of questions from vitamins are expected in your exam right coming to the last segment what do you think is this vitamin deficiency few important images that can come in the exam very very important this is the casals necklace okay this is the casals necklace which is seen with pellagra that is vitamin b3 deficiency right the dermatitis feature is what we are seeing here next one what is this the white spots here basically this are the bitot spots and these are suggestive of vitamin a deficiency right this is your vitamin a deficiency your xerophthalmia night blindness all those is your vitamin a for vision it is retinal okay it is retinal next one what is this one showing what is this image showing you can see this cock screw hair and there are some ecchymosis peri follicular right there is peri follicular hemorrhages with cock screw okay with cock screw hair that is suggestive of vitamin c deficiency that is scurvy okay that is scurvy uh prag i'm so sorry i have not included the vitamin d synthesis here maybe tomorrow when we do the mcqs i'll try and include that uh, so tomorrow 8 am the most expected mcqs we'll try and do the clinical mcqs on vitamins right so that we consolidate this and there we'll discuss the vitamin d synthesis also okay what is this vitamin deficiency you have the cupping you have the fraying and there is some splaying this is basically rickets right this is rickets that is vitamin d deficiency okay vitamin d deficiency okay tell me what is this image showing what is this image showing here very good this is b2 that is riboflavin deficiency why because we are seeing the blood vessels here that is corneal neovascularization very very important corneal neovascularization ribo is rubro the red color vessels right the red color vessels what is this image showing this is seborrheic dermatitis sebo is ribo this is your riboflavin deficiency seborrheic dermatitis riboflavin deficiency okay and what is this image showing here uh avinanda there's a very good video that i've put up on my youtube channel scurvy versus rickets radiology please check that it will help you clear all the doubts regarding the radiology features of scurvy and rickets this image is showing uh this image is showing hyper segmented neutrophil right this is hyper segmented neutrophil which is seen with megaloblastic anemia right that's your vitamin b12 deficiency very very important image based question 
which is asked in the exam. Very, very important. Hypersegmented neutrophil vitamin B12 deficiency. What is this image showing? So in this MRI image, basically, look at this MRI image, sagittal image. The posterior side of the spinal cord is showing the hyper intensity. And this is the spinal cord here. You can see this V-shape, arrow-shape hyper intensity in the posterior part. So this is subacute combined degeneration affecting the dorsal columns. That is basically your vitamin B12 deficiency. This is like called as arrowhead sign. Okay, so like the arrowhead in the spinal cord, you see the hyper intensity in the dorsal columns. Okay, in the dorsal columns. Inverted V sign. Also, it's also called as inverted V. And what is this image showing? Where is the abnormal signal intensity? This one, which you see here in the MRI, this is the midbrain, like the Mickey Mouse sort of thing. That's the midbrain. In front of the midbrain, we have the mammillary body. Like you see here, this is the midbrain. This is the mammillary body. So when you see the hyper intensity involving the mammillary body in MRI, you should think of Wernicke's encephalopathy that is basically your vitamin B1 deficiency. The mammillary body involvement very very important. Wernicke's encephalopathy that is B1 deficiency, thymine deficiency. All right. So that was for the session on vitamins. When are we meeting next? Uh, we are meeting next today at 9 p.m. on the Unacademy app for the free life class of KBMD Con Banega MD top 10 mnemonics right top 10 mnemonics kbmd and the plan for tomorrow is 8 a.m and 12 p.m we will try to do some clinical mcqs on uh, vitamins and mixed bag mcqs most expected mcqs and 12 p.m we will have the mnemonics crash course where we will uh, do surgery okay where we will be doing surgery okay i have covered that recently on how to identify midbrain pons and medulla Behind pons and medulla, you would see the cerebellar hemispheres. And midbrain has that classical Mickey Mouse shape. Okay. All right. So, I think whatever we have discussed here in the today's session, it's like a must watch and must revise one day before the exam. So, keep this video in your watch later or the live videos or keep the link safe. So, that one day before the exam, you revise all of this because many, 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 many questions are asked from this particular topic in the exam be it NEET PG or be it FMG, okay? So thank you so much everyone for joining in and have a great productive day. I'll see you at 9 p.m. today on the Unacademy app for KBMD Top 10 Mnemonics. Till then, goodbye, take care and keep studying, keep revising and keep